Hey friends, Shayla here. So I am here to start off day seven of eight of these reading vlogs. Today, I'm mostly gonna be focusing on Vengeance Road and then after that, we're gonna dive into some manga. I think we're gonna read all of Monkey High and then see what's gonna happen from there. Cause I've still got some kind of peace, melee, almost kind of things. But yeah, um, I loved doing the reaction vlog for Strobe Edge in this series. So I think I might do the Monkey High one as well. Cause I will have tons of time tomorrow. So today's focus is Vengeance Road. Um, I've got that live stream starting in about an hour and a half. So I'm just going to read until then. And then we'll readjourn because your battery is low. So we will chat soon. Hi friends. So it's like three o'clock in the afternoon now. The manga quarantine stream was a lot of fun. That will be linked down below in case you missed it so you can go back and watch it. We had a good conversation, it was a good time. And I'm like the first 45 pages into Vengeance Road. This one's definitely different than the others. Breezy and, um, let's see, it's Steel. Have a history <laughs> where she was part of another motorcycle club and some things like that. And there's a child involved, basically, Breezy was pregnant with Steele's child, but Steele had kind of exiled her anyway. And so she was raising her their child on her own for years. And now her child has been kidnapped by her own father and the motorcycle club. And so now she's come to Steele for help. And so they're trying to figure out how to best help her and Zane, the little boy, and get everything back on track for her and Steele to be together. Because he never really wanted to not be with her. It's one of those things that just ended up happening. I haven't gotten all the details as to the why yet. I have ideas, but I haven't figured out why exactly yet. So hello, sorry for the lack of clips today. It's like seven o'clock in the evening now. I've read another 200 pages in Vengeance Road. And I have to say, I really like the direction of this one. Breezy was raised in another club that was really bad. That motorcycle club had lots of drugs and they were part of a trafficking ring and stuff. And so Torpedo Inc. had infiltrated that club to shut it down and to kill the chapter leader who was in charge of the trafficking ring. So that's how um, Steele and Breezy initially met. But it got to a point where he felt like he had to protect her. So he pushed her away, said all sorts of awful things. And so she was raising her little boy on her own. Her little boy's been kidnapped. And so it's about them getting reacquainted because she came back to ask for help from him. And about them going to get her son. And their dynamic is just different than the other two couples that I've read from in this series. And I really enjoy their dynamic. It feels much more high stakes and because of their history, they more easily, it made sense for them to easily fall back into the sexual side of their relationship. And they're both trying to protect each other in different ways. And I really just enjoy what Feehan's doing with this series a lot. And again, we have PTSD issues that Steele has and PTSD issues that Brie has from everything that she went through. And they both have different ways of coping with it. And it's going to be interesting to see because there's one point that they're really fighting each other on. And I know the result, like how that ends up because I've read the book after this one. I accidentally read that one first. If you missed that in previous vlogs, but yes, I am really excited to figure out the rest of this journey so I'm now 250 pages into this 400-ish page book. So I've got about another 150 pages. It's about 7 p.m. So I'm pretty sure I can get this done tonight. And then tomorrow will be all about the manga. All right, and I've officially finished Vengeance Road. There, This book deals a lot more with the anxiety triggers for PTSD. There are multiple times where you see PTSD triggered. So obviously a huge trigger warning for that. This series definitely trigger warnings for like sexual assault, sexual abuse, 
those things to children and PTSD, panic attacks. The list is extensive. When I write my Goodreads reviews, I promise to be extensive with my trigger warnings because there's a lot in the series. So this series isn't going to be for everybody because of that triggering type of content. But I really enjoy how this series is written. The way that Breezy and Steele communicate through the PTSD triggers and panic attacks really was well handled and well done, in my personal opinion. As a whole, I really enjoy what Feehan's doing with this series. Is these women come into their lives and they have to accept a lot because none of the Torpedo Inc. members were raised in a good environment, we'll say. And they end up all having different triggers and things that they deal with within the series. And so exploring that the way that she does in the series is beautiful. And like I say, because of those things and because I was basically almost triggered as um, Steele was having a particularly large panic attack towards the end of the novel. Um, I actually had to like put it down and do something else for a minute and then come back to it. But it was so well written, but it could definitely be triggering to people. So fair warning on the series for that. But again, I really like these Torpedo Ink guys. Book four is coming out in July. I haven't looked at whose book it is, but I love all the Torpedo Ink guys. So I don't care whose book it is. Like I love them all for different reasons. I have a hint as to who it probably will be, but we'll see. Anyway, so that's all for the vlog for today. I'm going to Animal Crossing because it's like 930 at night and I haven't even logged in. So I'm just going to play video games until I go to bed. And then, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a very big manga day. There will be lots of clips for tomorrow to make up for today. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Hi friends, good morning. It is officially Sunday, which is the last day of Spring Into Manga Love. Readerama finished yesterday and that's why we read the Tor Torpedo Inks book yesterday. So today we're gonna read Monkey High and then we'll see if we have time to squeeze in some other things. So let's jump into volume one. All right, so volume one of Monkey High complete. So we're dealing with the daughter of a fallen politician, like he was arrested. I'm guessing he was set up for something for, with the way everything sounds. So she felt exiled at her elitist school and transfers to a public school where she runs into this boy who reminds her of a baby monkey. And she feels like, School feels like living on a monkey mountain and people are just vying for dominance and whatnot. Anyways, so school hunk obviously is after the new pretty girl, but she doesn't think anything of him. But this cute little boy who looks like a monkey, well, he's not a little boy, he's a teenager. They're like the same height and he's just sweet and nice to her. And throughout the course of the volume, they develop feelings for each other and become boyfriend and girlfriend. So this series is going to be exploring their relationship. And so far, it's pretty cute. She confronts her old boyfriend, says, I have a boyfriend now. That boyfriend doesn't believe it once he meets Masaru, but everybody called him Machiru. And it's just cute so far. I think it's going to be fun. Like... I could understand why people don't like the main girl for sure, but she doesn't bother me overly much. So I'm excited to continue. I'm going to take a little break. My friends want to meet up in Animal Crossing, so we're going to do that for a little bit. And then it's back to Monkey High. Alrighty, I have now completed volume two of Monkey High. And again, I can see why people wouldn't necessarily like our main girl in this one. In this one, her dad gets released from his incarceration or imprisonment or whatever they're calling it in this story and she goes on her first date with Masaru and they're just really cute it's developing slowly and clearly she's got lots of ups and downs her whole entire life was turned upside down six months ago and so I expect her to kind of be 
on that moody roller coaster, but I could understand why people wouldn't like the series because of that. Um, the reason I say that, um, I acquired this from my friend Margaret over at Adorkable. She had tried to read it and wasn't enjoying it. And I can understand why it wouldn't be enjoyable to someone. I'm having a good time so far. I really like Masaru as a character. And I really love that he's opening her eyes to things and helping her come into her own self. It's going to be interesting to see how things continue to play out for them. So let's dive into volume three. Okay, so volume three of Monkey High Complete. And this series does a lot of things right. Like, I feel like they're trying to break the typical stereotype of the pretty boy with the pretty girl in the school. And she's still learning a lot about herself. And she's insecure because of what happened with her family. And it totally changing her world. But Misaru is so supportive and will support her in whatever she wants to do. Um, there was, let's see in this one, I think the last one was the Valentine's one, right? Or was that this one? No, this one we dealt with Valentine's and then the discussion of her running for student council and both situations were handled interestingly, but like in a way that I'm okay with, like for this dynamic and these characters, all those decisions make a lot of sense. So I'm still enjoying this. I can understand why people wouldn't like it, of course. But yeah, I'm I'm enjoying the direction of the series. Um, I don't know that I will continue to enjoy it. I still have five volumes left. But for right now, it's starting off pretty solid and I'm really enjoying it. So let's dive into volume four. All right, and volume four complete. We've filled out Haruna's family dynamic a little bit more. We finally met her brother, who's kind of been MIA. And so there's this whole thing where we're trying to bring him back into the story. And I think it's going really well. And there's some insecurity starting to surface on Masaru's end. And not really properly been handled yet. But it has been discussed a little bit. I think that's going to float around a little while longer. Because the popular guy is interested in Haruna. So... I'm at the halfway point in the series now, so I think I'm going to take a break it's around lunchtime. So I'm going to make me some lunch and then I will dive in to volume five. Okay, volume five complete. We're still kind of in insecurity land, mostly on Masaru's side of things and where he knows and he feels like he's out of his league with Haruna, like... It makes sense to an extent, but at the same time, it's like, okay, you guys have known each other over a year. You've been dating for a long time now. A lot of those insecurities should have been put to bed a long time ago. But um, I do enjoy where... I do enjoy the general direction of the story. I like that we have big time skips and that, you know, we're five volumes into a series and it's been over a year. And there was a whole Romeo and Juliet thing. And there was a really good kiss for that, that chapter. And I really enjoyed that. And the New Year's thing was a little awkward. But New Year's things tend to get awkward in shoujo. I don't know why. But that's where more of the insecurity stuff kind of came up. And so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how volume six goes. Okay. So I'm only about halfway through volume six, but, um, it was the like class trip one for whatever reason it was happening in the winter, but it really played out really nicely. That's one of the better, like school trip conflicts that I've read in a shoujo and I really appreciated the direction that it went because um Atsu the popular guy confesses to Haruna and she just doesn't even register that that's what he's done because she loves Matsuru so much and it's really sweet and so they had their various conflicts, but the way it was resolved was really sweet. And I just, I really like them as a couple. He brings out things in her that she's afraid of in herself. 
And I really like that dynamic a lot. He does a lot of good for her. She does a lot of good for him. She helps him grow up and mature and things. It's, it's just so good, guys. It's just so good. I'm going to get back to reading it. Okay? Okay. Okay. And volume six officially complete. After this, we are getting to the point in the series where they are debating how to move their relationship forward physically because they both want to be physically and emotionally closer. So they're looking at the next step physically. They've just been kissing and hugging on occasion at this point. And there was an incident where he accidentally fell and his hand landed on her boob. And so he started to think about her differently in that way. And it took her a while to kind of catch up to him that way. And now they're debating how that next step is going to go. So I think the next two volumes are going to kind of be them figuring out that side of their relationship. So, all right. So volume seven complete. This was another very realistic volume where they both finally looked at their situations academically and realized they're most likely not going to be going to the same college because one, they don't have similar interests and two, academically, they are on different levels. Um, Haruna is much more studious than Masako. And so we've got both of them trying hard in their own way and naturally that created some distance they were talking on the phone more because they couldn't see each other as much and again it was just very realistic in how this played out but we had a reunification as you can say at the end of this volume so i'm really looking forward to the final volume to see how everything wraps up and plays out okay so for all its good points I can't say that I was the biggest fan of the ending. I mean, I expected a happy ending. Most shoujo end happy. But this one, ugh, it felt a little immature, I guess. And I just, mm, I don't know. I'm going to have to think on it a little longer. But initially, with the decision made by the end, with the lack of time skip, I'll word it that way, um, made me a little disappointed. Um, I needed that time skip for it to feel a little more realistic. So anyhow, that is the end of Monkey High. Like I say, it's a really solid series, but not my favorite ending. So I think that's the easiest way to sum up my feelings. Um, it's a solid four till this last volume. I would give the last volume a three. There's a lot of good things that happened in this last volume, but the very end of it, like the final resolution was not my favorite choice. And it was definitely a choice by the manga cut. So... Now, it is about 2.30 in the afternoon, and I do have some more manga I could read, and I'm kind of in that reading mood, so let's come over and look at what I've got. So, this is what I have left on my manga physical TBR in general. So I actually think I want to tackle this second volume of Carnival. I don't want to wait too long before I keep going on this one. So I think that is going to be my choice. I read the last Omnibus, I believe in the last Manga Love Readathon. I was originally going to read both, but I opted to wait. So let's go ahead and dive into this one. Hi, friends. So I just did a live read with me style video. It was about two hours and I ended up reading the entirety of the Carnival Omnibus number two. And I really love what's happening in this series. Like it's major spoilers if I start talking about what's going on. But I continue to love the character development that we're seeing between our cast. And it's just really well done. I really thoroughly enjoy this. So I think I might take another break. I'm starting to feel tad burnt out. So this might be the end of things. The, at the very least, I will film a wrap up a little bit later, maybe tomorrow morning. I'm not 100% sure. But yes, really enjoyed Carnival. Gonna take a break. And I will either 
show up with another volume or with a full wrap up of everything that I've read over the last day. Hi friends. So this is the final wrap up for my readorama slash slash spring into manga love reading vlog series. I hope you guys have enjoyed all four vlogs and that you find yourself in a happy place today. If you're in the U.S., happy Memorial Day. I need to close this window a little bit because I'm not wearing pants. All right. So I'm going to briefly kind of rapid fire talk about everything that I've read in the last eight days and we'll move on from there. So first up, I'm going to mention the only digital title, which was I'll Win You Over Senpai Volume 1. I ended up giving this four stars, solidly enjoyed it, plan on continuing on with the series, and I am genuinely excited for the direction of the series because I think it's going to be a really fun time. Next, I read the entirety of Monkey High. Overall, I enjoyed this, but the final volume let me down a little bit, and so I was a little disappointed. I'm on the fence as to whether I'm going to keep this in my collection or not because of that ending, because I hate that all this good stuff leads up to a not-so-healthy ending, but I'm still all debating because the rest of the series is a solid four, and then I just dropped this one down to a three because of the ending. So anyways, I'm going to think on this. But overall, I did honestly enjoy it. Next, I read the first three volumes or the first omnibus of Holic by Clamp. Absolutely adored this. Definitely planning on picking it more. I tried to pick up more in the Right Stuff Memorial Day sale, but they were all sold out of the ones that I need. So this is what I'm going to be on the hunt for for the next little while. I also read the second omnibus of Carnival. So this contains volumes three and four, I believe. And I genuinely enjoyed this. This is in action slash suspense Jose title. It's not overly graphic, but I, it's high stakes and high impact. And I really enjoyed it for that. So I'm definitely excited to continue on with the series. This was a series that had a long hiatus, but it's publishing again. So I'm really, really, really excited that I finally decided to dive in. And last in the manga space, I found a new favorite and that is Strobedge. I read it in its entirety and had the best time. It was really fun. So far, it's my favorite Iosaki Saka. I think Ao Horu Ride, though it is more popular because of the anime, I think is a little too overly dramatic for me, where this kind of scales that back a bit, and I really genuinely enjoyed this. So if I'm going to recommend an Iosaki Saka title, right now it's going to be this. Second would probably be Love Me, Love Me Not, and then Ao Horu Ride, which is probably unpopular, but this series is so solid, and I really loved the characters a lot. Quickly, I forgot to mention Let's Dance a Waltz, Volumes 1 through 3. Really enjoyed them. We'll be talking about them more in my reread roundup coming up soon. Next, we have the books, and I have read all three books in the Torpedo Inc. series by Christine Feehan that are currently out. I gave them each four stars. These guys have problematic things that happen to them as children, and so the trigger warnings will be extensive. Look out for my Goodreads reviews to get the extensive list because believe me, I'm going to write them because I was almost triggered by book two. I actually had to put it down because I was starting to feel triggered. So I'm definitely going to be listing those in my reviews. So watch out for those if you're interested in the series and have any triggers because the series is really good, really sexy. It has kind of that kinky taboo side to it. And I really, really enjoyed that. Then we have The Blacksmith Queen by G.A. Aiken. And this was a solid four stars. I thought it was really fun. The language is a bit crass, lots of F words. So if you're sensitive to that, just be aware. But I ended up genuinely enjoying this. I thought it was a good time and I'm definitely looking forward to the next in the series. With where this leaves off, it closes it enough, but I'm definitely looking forward to the next one, which I believe is slated for November at the moment. Then we have Shout by Laurie Hulse Anderson. I'm not gonna be giving this one a rating just because it's an autobiography but it's done in verse, all in free verse. It was really well done. I really enjoyed my experience with this book. So being someone who was assaulted, um, I found a lot of solace in this and watching her take over her life and her story was beautiful and I highly recommend checking this out. And then last but not least, I finally finished Heir of Navron by Michael J. Sullivan. I loved my experience with the Rayuri Revelation series. I gave this final book five stars. I loved it. It was so well done. I was so happy with the ending. It was just everything I needed it to be and more. So I highly recommend checking out this series so, so very much. All right, friends, that is everything that I've read in the last eight days. And man, it's a ton. 
I kind of went a little crazy with all of this, but I genuinely enjoyed my experience. It was just a fun time. And I hope you all enjoyed this series. Let me know in the comments down below what you've read in the last eight days, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.